Okay, guys. Um, I got to a point where I think I can finally start explaining this stuff. Um, now, all this kind of started from trying to refine the terms, um, and it took, I'm not joking, it took a long time and a lot of processing and, um, yeah, a lot of a, a lot of collaboration, but then also like feeling like I'm just thinking in an echo, not being able to really talk about, about this with other people. So I really want to get this out there so we can start having the conversation. Um, so like I was making this doc and it was going through a lot of stuff and <laughs> lots of tables. Um, yeah, this is a huge table too and understanding stuff. Um, but what I wanted to get to is like, okay, so from this table and from these other tables, um, I was able to get out a diagram. Now the diagram, this is the old one. Okay, now this diagram looks very simple, um, but it's actually, there's actually a lot in here and I'm like, I'm constantly unlocking more and more from the diagram, right? So I just kind of wanted to start sharing the diagram with you guys um, at what I got to. So, so okay, so here's what's going on. Um, the first, I'm going to take you through a little bit the process I got to in getting here, um, just because, just the relevant parts, right? So the first thing that really unlocked all this for me um, was seeing um, the difference between approaches and orientations and seeing that all of Jungian cognition in essence is trying to justify our neural pathways. So our neural pathways aren't just operating and creating themselves out of nowhere, right? They have to create themselves for some kind of purpose, for some kind of reason. They need some kind of justification to exist and to be created, right? And so the justification um, for the neural pathways it falls into two categories. Um, so one of the categories for the justifications is like the ends, what we're working to, where we're going towards. And, 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 and so that I, I was seeing had more to do with the needs, the animals, all that kind of stuff. Um, and the other one has to do with how are we actually building those pathways, right? So like I can justify a pathway for an ends for like, I want control, right? I want control. So I'm going to justify all these pathways in the name of control. But how do I get the control? How do I build that control? So, so like, am I am I doing a lot of thinking in order to and parsing it out to get to this conclusion for control, right? And so, all of our I was seeing that as all of our Jungian cognition is just doing that. It's it's doing th those two things. They're working together. That we're trying to get to some kind of um, way to justify our neural pathways, the existence of these neural pathways, justify creating them, justify reinforcing them, justify not throwing them out, all this kind of stuff, right? So that was the big one. So so on, so on, you'll see on the approach side and the orientation side, um, there are different ways just, so this is like the end sort of thing, and these are like the means. Okay, just a little bit of an overview here. Okay, and then the, the coins, the dimensions, the coins or whatever we were seeing here, um, is pretty interesting. So I'm going to talk briefly about what's going on. Let's start with the orientations. So extroverted and introverted, we've been processing this for a while. This is what Jung brought to the table. This is the this is what sort of created the cognitive functions because when you add introverted and extroverted to these four, like thinking, feeling, sensing, and, and intuition, when you add the introverted and extroverted to them, you get to a cognitive function, right? You get to the full dimensionality of a cognitive function, right? Um, and that's how Jung got there. But just because Jung got there in that way, it doesn't mean that's the only way to view them. And it's not the only way to get to them, right? And so that's kind of what deconstructing the these parts in um, and deconstructing them in a way um, led me to see how there's many other ways to view the cognitive functions and get to the cognitive function and deconstruct them and construct them, right? So on the orientation side, basically... What I, what I was seeing is there's an immersive property from um, judging and perceiving, for example, it's an immersive property. It's not, it's not inherent. It's, it's not the most basic um, dimensionality here. Right. So, and, and so I'm going to skip how I got there, but ba basically if you are externalizing what is extroverted in order to externalize what's extroverted, you have to judge it. That's how you externalize what is extroverted. You have to judge it. And that's where the judgment comes from. And same thing here. In order to internalize what is introverted, you have to make a decision about it, right? That's how you internalize what's introverted. And then same thing. In order to internalize what's extroverted, you have to perceive it. You have to get some kind of perception. And then in order to externalize what is introverted, 
you have to also perceive it. But I like this, this, I, I like the word here, ascribing, you're ascribing the introverted. You're when you're externalizing it, you're actually ascribing the introverted, um, um, to, to the, you're, so you're externalizing it is ascribing it, right? So you're externalizing the introverted. So you have to perceive it in order to do that. So that's where like that even comes from, right? And same thing on the thinking, sensory intuition, all this stuff here, it comes from um, something um, more fundamental. And so what I, this, okay, so this came from, this differentiation came from uh, Assis. We were looking at this differentiation. We didn't really know what to call it or what the commonality was. And uh, I have to give credits to us where credit is due. Um, so Assis gave us these words um, and the words just basically fit, like they were just dead on. So there's like the explicit and the implicit. And this is something that uh, Otim actually threw out to me is the intel. He didn't like the word intellectual. He liked in experiential and then detached from experience. It's like you've got an intellectual side that can be attached to your experience or an intellectual side that is detached from experience. So yeah, I know the the intellectual word isn't isn't the best word, but like that's the best we have right now. So all this is, is subject to change, obviously. Um, yeah, I, another thing is I'm doing a project called the uh, binary cognitive framework or bico framework, whatever up here. Um, and basically, what it is is trying to get the correct terminology and all this stuff. So all this terminology can change. This is just the best words we have for now. Um, I'm gonna go all the way back down again. <laughs> So, okay. So there's, a, there's actually a lot in here. Um, um, one of the things I was seeing for like the animals, for example, is, okay, what is consume? Consume. So uh, extroverted and introverted, this, this is where play should be in the extroverted side, right? So it should be energy, but it's actually not. Extroverted and introverted are actually info and internalizing and externalizing are actually energy. So how is consume an info animal if it's sitting in an, in a, in an energy space? And, and the answer is, well, it's balancing two sides of info. So, so it has one info component, it has another info component. So it's got two info components and only one energy component. That's why it's info. It's balancing the info and it's all through one type of energy. So it's one type of energy and two types of info and it's trying to balance them. So that's kind of like where the, the animals actually play in here, which is uh, also, <laughs> it's, it's also really fascinating. And then the same thing here, I was seeing something really fascinating here. So when you're balancing um, explicit and implicit, I was seeing this um, in the mannerisms and I'll talk about the mannerisms in a second, but this is where creativity comes from. So like you've got the SF creativity and the NT creativity. So um, it's two forms of beauty, right? So the SF beauty and creativity is, um, uh, so Thomas Eilat gave a good explanation of this. It's like, if you were to take a picture of someone that's completely naked, that's completely explicit, right? But there's no beauty in someone that's just completely naked. It doesn't matter. The, the, the beauty comes from the hidden parts, what you're implying, what's implied behind the explicit, right? It's, it comes from the dance between the explicit and the implicit, right? And that's where that's where beauty, and same thing in the intellect. And uh, I had another video on this, but I'll just say it again. Um, so like Richard Feynman, for example, has a very good talk about uh, flowers and how he sees the beauty in the flowers. And he's seeing it from a very intellectual beauty in the flowers. And then he's talking about how um, his artist friend sees the beauty in the flowers and he's seeing it from a very experiential side to the beauty in the flowers. Um, and, 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 and yeah, so it's, it's, it's interesting that there's like those two sides of beauty that you can merge, um, as well. Um, uh, and then the other thing I was seeing is, okay, problem solving is it, the mannerisms kept talking about NF as being like a problem solving thing. Like ST obviously is problem solving, but NF for me wasn't obvious. And, and then again, the idea is you're, you're balancing the intellectual side of things and the experience side of things. And that's how you solve problems. Like there's an experience and then there's an intellectual side of it. And when you balance those two out, when you work them together, when you build the two together, you're solving whatever problem you're doing. And you can either do, you can either solve explicit problems or inter, in, implicit problems in that way. Okay. So that that's, there's, there's like a lot here. Okay. Another one that I was seeing is, okay. So this is from Thomas Eilat. He was saying how everything is in, uh, info or energy, anything is info energy or whatever. Um, I don't know if I bought that. I don't know. I might buy that. Like it might be true or it might not be true. I don't know what's going on there, but I do know that there's more, there's more of like a, uh, like a, 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 a uh, there's more like whatever E is it's more there's a more e trait to things um it's so like explicit versus implicit implicit is more implied and this is the one he was saying so this is energy and this is info i kept the letters but i i didn't i, I don't know if that's really what's going on 
But what I did see is when I was preserving this, like experiential is also more um, external and intellectual is more internal, right? And and same thing, externalizing or internalizing, right? So so I kept the letters this way. And what was interesting is um, what objective personality claims is external is where you can see the masculines, right? And so what they're saying, what they were saying is like, okay, the first masculine is sensory. And sure enough, it's where the EE intersect on the approaches that the, the, the masculine here is tracking some kind of external element on it's explicit experiential. And then the second one, sure enough, is DE. It's externalizing the extroverted. And so, and so these two facets are some kind of external aspect that is track and OP is tracking the masculines. So it's just interesting that like, this is still lining up sort of thing, right? I, I don't know how all of this really maps out yet. For me, I built it out of the tables and now I'm just starting to try to understand what all of this is actually even meaning and implying. So I'm just going to share like some basic things that I was seeing, right? So now another one that was really interesting were the mannerisms and I'm not going to go through how I, how we got to them and why they're important and how the divisions and how the dimensions and how the permutations, um, cause like, just, just saying like, there are, um, like there's eight cognitive functions, right? And so this is Loglin was going into all of these permutations. Um, so it's, um, into, uh, combinatorics, right? So like eight, cho uh, eight choose four ends up being 70. So there's 70 ways you can, um, take groups of four of the cognitive functions. So that's like 35 ways you can split them in two. So it's like 35 ways you can cut the cake on the cognitive dimensions. Um, but anyways, I don't want to get too much into that, but there's like, um, if you cut them twice, if you cut the cognitive functions twice, you have some kind of basic understanding and some kind of basic background to this. So that's one way to get to it. And the other way to get to it is just overlap two of these. So you overlap intellectual with extroverted, for example, then you get here extroverted intellectual that's in the Delta quadrant. And we called this mannerism consensus. Now, uh, just, just cause I'm picking on consensus here. So it doesn't mean Delta quadrant is only looking for consensus, but it's trying to consensualize things. It's trying to make consensus, create consensus, find consensus, um, um, explore consensus is um, uh, contrast them. Um, see, these people are thinking in this kind of consensus, how, how, how would they accept this other idea, right? All this kind of stuff is all, is all what consensus is. So it's like, it's like, it's a full grown mannerism, um, that comes out of here. And basically the mannerisms are a different way to describe the functions. So like there's, there's 16 mannerisms and every function has four out of those 16 mannerisms. So TE, for example, if you wanted to describe TE in the mannerisms, you just get um, explaining, empirical, implementing, and consensus. All these things um, are mannerisms of TE, right? And I, I laid them out here because in this way because um, like they didn't start out laid out in based on the quadra. They started out laid out based on the combinatorics of things. But I I put them in the quadra because it just organizes them better. But 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 it's like oh, there's just a lot here. I don't even know where to start. So. Um, so yeah, if you want to look at any function, you can look at all four of those mannerisms, but at the same time, you can only you could take two of the mannerisms and that would define the function, right? Cause each mannerism is, is, is talking about one kind of two functions, right? So analyzing, for example. So if I was to say, um, truth analyzing, that's only TI, or if I was to say essential truth, that's only NI, NI is essential truth, right? So I, anytime you combine two of them, you're getting an interesting aspect of what the cognitive function is. So it's like many different lenses. And the other thing I was seeing is if you build them up and you combine them, so you can, you can combine two of these and two of those together, you can actually start seeing what is inside the animals, the object of personality animals. You can start seeing the structure of the animals. So, so the animals aren't doing just one thing. They're doing so many different things and so many different aspects. And, and those can be built up out of the mannerisms. So by taking two and combining it with another two and then adding another two or, or balancing them, right? Because like th this is actually a, a place of three. So like the very gamma quadra, for example, if you wanted to see gamma play, right? So gamma play is... Um, uh, the mannerism of gamma play is empirical, but it's it's um, balancing the the acquisition and the explaining, right? So you can look at it even in that lens of threes, right? So there's just it, it, there's just so much going into the animals that the mannerisms are actually starting to describe what's in in them. 
Okay, so that's one more thing that you guys can look at if you wanted to look at this diagram a little deeper. I'm trying to think what else I wanted to just uh, point out here that can be really useful to you guys. Um, yeah, okay, so the other thing is, okay, differences between quadras, for example. So so I'm in beta quadra, and really what what this means is, okay, I have I have aspects of alpha. I've got, I have all of these mannerisms from alpha, right? I don't have, I don't have any, but I have analyzing because I have TI and I don't have any, but I have associative because I have FE, right? And same thing here. I have exacting, um, not because of SI, but because of TI, right? And so, but when I go to Delta, I don't have any of these mannerisms. And so these are the mannerisms I'm like, I'm doubling up on these mannerisms. So I've got examining in two functions, but I'm I'm not doing any of these mannerisms. And that was really fascinating to me to see what my real voids are. So it's like, okay, yeah, definitely I'm not I'm not interested in consensus, examining consensus, um, parsing out consensus, trying to make consensus, none of that. And preferences, far from, I have no preferences. I don't even know what preferences are. I'm not trying to make any kind of preferences, 100%. Um, uncovering as well. Yeah, I'm not trying to uncover um, secrets. <laughs> like that's just not my... That's just not my thing. <laughs> and 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 implementing things, it would be nice. It, you know, this is the one that I'm just like, oh man, it would be really nice if I could start implementing whatever th whatever that means, right? So again, these words aren't exactly 100% um, accurate. I, I, I talk about it as like, it's a, you know, like if you go to a murder scene and or you see murder scenes on a movie or whatever, and you see like the dead body and you've got like the silhouette around the dead body, right? So when you take away the dead body, all that's left is with a silhouette. So it's kind of what I'm seeing. It is like, this is like a silhouette of something. And it's like, I'm trying to put the word in there. I'm trying to see, okay, does this body fit inside the silhouette? Does this word fit? Uh, it's close enough, right? So anyways, just so you know, like these words aren't aren't really great. But yeah, like I, I can see whatever this concept is here is I'm missing it. And I and it would be really nice. And then like, uh, as well, if it's like you see criticism. So like you see these, a lot of criticism of the gamma quadra is um, they're not exacting. Like they're not being precise and exact in any of the stuff they're doing. They're not even trying. Right, um, they're not being associative. They're not trying to see how how this relates to uh, the the spectrum of of relate relations. <laughs> I guess you know um, they're not trying to cater it. They're not trying to um, they're not trying to they even uh, shit on this a lot. Um, the catering aspect. They're not trying to you know dumb it down. They're not they do dumb it down, but they're not trying to um, cater to people. You know, um, they're just very blunt. I guess um, yeah. Yeah. So, so anyways, like that's the, um, trying to think what else is interesting to look at here in, in the mannerisms. There's just a lot. Um, so the, uh, yeah, probably going to be more videos. Uh, this is just the the beginning of what's going on here, but I wanted to share it with you guys so we can start, whoever's interested can start looking at it and exploring it. And we can actually start, uh, going deeper on this together. Um, because yeah, I realized that I'm not, you know, I, I don't understand this completely yet. I don't understand all the implications completely yet, and I'm working on it. But um, it'd be nice to, yeah, have that kind of discussion. Anyways, that's what I got. Um, have a good one, everyone. Uh, and uh, and yeah, I, I I I hope this isn't too overwhelming, and I hope it's not too out there. But um, yeah, it uh, yeah. Well, good luck. <laughs> uh, there'll be more. Don't worry. <laughs>